In this video, I'm going to talk to you about working with multi-item combo boxes, meaning a combo box that has more than one item or row of data in it. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and pull down our toolbox, add our combo box here. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel, just like we did on our first video on our combo box here. And I'm going to right click on the combo box, go to properties, and I'm going to go to row source. And I'm going to go ahead and build my row source as if I was building a query. Using the QBE makes things a lot easier. Okay, so this is a table that I'm going to build my combo box off of. And so I can go to city and state. I'm going to actually bring in both those items here. And I'm going to go ahead and close it out. I'll save it for now. And let's just look at the combo box real quick first. Okay. And so now I'm showing city. What happened to the state? Well, here's what happened. If I go ahead and go to the properties of my combo box again, I'm going to see a couple of things. So on the format, I see column count. See the column count? It says column count is 1. Well, the combo box doesn't necessarily automatically know that you have more than one item there. So you're actually going to have to specify that. So I'm going to go ahead and put down column count 2. Okay, and then you have an option of putting the column headings. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. I, I do want the column column headings here, and then column widths. Now, this is where you would set uh, a width for your columns. And so, I'm going to go ahead and say the city's pretty big, so I'll set that to uh, one inch. And the state's not all that big, and I'll set that to 0.5. And so, you separate the columns here by a semicolon and then you can actually specify the list rows that you have here so uh, do I want 8 coming down I want to show 10 at a time so I'll just put down 10 and that is pretty good I'm happy with that so I'm gonna go ahead and do this and hit it and so now I see city and state because now I've told the combo box that I want both columns shown here Now let's go ahead and talk about how to change the bound column of a multi-column combo box. Now in one of these multi-column combo boxes, when you create it, the first column is always the bound column, automatically, by default. So for example, rep ID here for Michelle, the one I'm picking, is going to be 55689. So what does that mean? That means that when you select a selection in a combo box, Access identifies a piece of data that can be used in other places. For example, if you need to use this particular rep ID in a query or in a piece of code, uh, this value of this combo box has just changed to 55689. I've got a text box here that shows you what the value of the bound column is in this combo box as a test here. So I can go to Kelly 55231, the bound piece of data now says that the value of this combo box is 55231 and again you can take this and you can use it in another query somewhere else in your program or in a piece of code that you have so let's go ahead and talk about changing this bound column we'll go ahead and right click on the combo box go to properties and go to the data tab now in this data tab it says bound column I'm going to change my bound column to column 2 and column 2 is name. So as you can see now, I have column 1, which is rep ID, and column 2, which is name. So now, if when I select Michelle, Michelle is my bound data. So how do you use this in a real application? Well, there's a lot of ways, but I'll give you one example here. I've got this user interface, and I want my users to pick from a combo box that has only names. I just want to basically show names. But the catch is that I need my bound data to be rep ID because rep ID is unique and I want to uh, use rep ID in a query to link to other tables that has rep ID as a key. So uh, again, I want to show my users only names because they don't need to see the rep ID, but I want to show uh, access rep ID as far as the bound data goes. So here's what I'll do to fix this particular combo box. I'm going to go to my row source and I'm going to take note that my rep ID is column 1 
and my name is column two. This is fine. I'm happy with this. I just need to take note that rep ID is column one and name is column two. And so my bound column, I want to say my bound column is column one. Okay. Now on the format, I want to say the column count is two because I need access to recognize both columns in my combo box. And then column width, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say the column width is zero for the first column and one for the second column. I'm going to fix this zero. So zero inches for the first column and one inch for the second column. Okay? And now let's say I want ten names at a time. Okay, so let's do a drop down on this combo box, and as you can see, I only see names. So now when I select Michelle, I've got Michelle showing in the combo box as a user interface, but on the back end, I'm showing 55689 as the bound data. So Access has what it needs to continue on doing other things in the back end as far as the application goes, and the user has what he or she needs, and the fact that all they're seeing is a very simple drop-down box that shows name.